Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all continuing to keep safe and well as best you can and if things are difficult at the moment then you have my sympathies. I know it's very tough for some people at the moment. Mum and I are doing fine thankfully. I was still getting shopping delivered and I haven't been out of the house for a month now in fact because I just wanted to keep mum safe as well as myself. You know I could go out for a walk now and again if I wanted to but it's just safer and easier to stay at home. I'm perfectly happy doing it. I've been kind of practicing for this for years really. I'm quite used to staying at home and home working and things so for me fortunately this hasn't been too difficult but I know it has been for many many people and you know don't forget there is the support out there if you need it. And yeah you know the deal with these videos by now if you've been following this channel already just a recap of what I've been enjoying over the past week and things I've been discovering that you might want to check out yourself as well. There's no sponsorship or gifting involved as per usual so all opinions are my own. I just feature these things because I like them and I think that you might like them too. And as always there's a detailed blog post to go with this as well because I can only summarise things in this video so I write about them in more detail on my blog so go and check that out as well. The link to the post as well as various other links will be in the description. So yeah, let's just crack on with it and I hope you enjoy it as always. So the first thing to mention is uh, Captain Tom Moore or Colonel Tom Moore, of course, to say a very happy 100th birthday. Um, he had an amazing day as he deserved to after all his efforts. You know, he's raised nearly £33 million on his Just Giving page, which is now closed. He's also raised over £6 million in gift aid from that page as well from people who've signed up to it as UK taxpayers. And he's raised money from his charity single as well, You'll Never Walk Alone with Michael Ball. So yeah, he's raised at least £40 million, I would say, easily. So very well done to him. That's extremely impressive for one man and for a very good cause. And he had a wonderful birthday with a very impressive RAF fly past, which was amazing to watch on the TV. So I can only imagine what it was like in person. He was made an honorary member of the England cricket team. He's had Guinness World Records for his fundraising and chart-topping achievements. He's had trains named after him. And he's been awarded the Freedom of the City of London. And he's had a Pride of Britain award as well from ITV. And he's had... 150,000 cards from members of the public which had filled an entire school hall and just so many other things he's got. I've listed various bits and pieces in my blog that he's had this week. And he deserves it all, you know, the amount of effort he's put in and the amount of morale he's raised in people as well as money. It's just fantastic. So yeah, very happy birthday, Tom Moore. You can relax now, sir. <laughs> so then in terms of theatre, I've watched a couple of productions online this week, both by the National Theatre for a change. I haven't watched any of their free shows yet, so this was a good opportunity to watch a couple of shows that got my attention. Um, so this week they've published Frankenstein, which is directed by Danny Boyle, who's very famous, and it stars Benedict Cumberbatch and Johnny Lee Miller. And the interesting thing about this is that there are two versions, one starring Benedict as the creature, one starring Johnny Lee Miller as the creature, and then the other person in each case plays Frankenstein. So it's interesting to compare the two. I watched the full show where Benedict was the creature, and he did an amazing job at that, as did Johnny as Frankenstein. It's a really intense play. It's very emotional at times. It brings up a lot of moral issues, you know, about bringing life into the world and then kind of ending it and things like that. And there's a bit of humour in there too. There's quite a mixture of things in there. There's a blind character in there as well. There's no audio description though, which is a shame because you really need it in the early part of the play in particular when the creature's born. So if you can't see, then the first 15 minutes or so and it'll mean nothing to you but it is very very good if you can see it i watched a bit of the other version as well i didn't see the whole thing i didn't want to see the whole show twice in quick succession but i chose a few key scenes like the creature's birth and the key meeting between frankenstein and his creature and it was interesting to compare the two obviously the styles of the actors are a bit different in both cases but that makes it interesting so whichever version you pick is great so yeah i really enjoyed uh, frankenstein i thought that was a very powerful production and then the other production i watched of theirs was treasure island which uh, actually been on their channel like previously but I had a downloaded copy because I didn't want to miss it and yeah I really enjoyed that um, Jim Hawkins was great in narrating it and taking you on the journey with them and there's lots of action and intrigue and some humour as well throughout the play it doesn't take itself too seriously but it's also very exciting as well and they really do use uh, the stage to full effect here you know if you know the National Theatre you know it's got this revolving stage that goes round and it can lift up as well to reveal bits underneath it so there's one spectacular moment where the ship is revealed it's brilliant and they use the revolving stage in various other parts of the play as well and yeah just the, the costumes and sets and things are all very very good so visually it's great as well as just being great entertainment so I really enjoyed that too and of course the National Theatre were asking for donations as well if you can afford it and it is important to say that you know if you are enjoying things like theatres or museums or musicians comedians anything like that to get you through this then you know do consider giving them a donation if you are able to do so because it helps them to maintain their livelihood when a lot of their income has been lost right now and it will help ensure they can stay in their careers and their businesses that you can then go and see them in person after this is over so don't just necessarily treat it for free and you know, unless you have to if you really can't afford it it's nice to just give a bit of appreciative money back just to say thank you to support them i think it's only fair 
On the disability front, I wanted to give a quick shout out to another blind YouTuber called Mona, who runs a channel called Planes, Trains and Canes. My friend Claire recommended this channel to me and I'm glad she did because it's a very interesting short documentary series about Mona's travels to various parts of the world, basically, as she sees how she gets on as a blind traveller, how she can navigate and how she experiences the culture and things like that. So I checked out her London episodes in particular, as well as one or two others, but the London ones are obviously particularly um, interesting to me because I live here. So it was interesting to see in the first part her arrival, how she got on on the tube and things particularly when she was trying to get by on her own without using the assistance when the staff were insisting that she should be using the assistance so that interaction was interesting because you don't have to use the assistance at stations but in this particular case the member of staff wasn't aware of that so yeah there was an interesting kind of discussion that resulted from that and then in the second part she was exploring the culture of the city visiting various sites and things so that was interesting to see and I'm glad she enjoyed herself here and there was an interesting little chat with someone from RNIB Connect Radio as part of that too so yeah, it's an interesting documentary series. Um, it's well worth a watch if you want to see how a blind person gets on navigating the world, especially unfamiliar places, and how they get to enjoy the culture and things like that as well. And then also on the disability front, a uh, quick shout out to Emma from Rock for Disability as well, because she mentioned one of my blog posts in her April 2020 summary. So that was very kind of her. Thank you very much, Emma. That was my uh, Audio Description Awareness Day post that she recommended, where I basically described why audio description is important and why I like to use it. So yeah, go and check that out if you haven't already. Moving on to comedy, and I finished the podcast series Locked Together on Audible, which they released for free. This is basically where pairs of stand-up comedians just get in touch online and just chat about life in lockdown, how they're getting on. So there's eight episodes altogether, and there are four out of those that I particularly like the most. So there was a Jason Manford talking to Sarah Millican, there was French and Saunders talking to each other, Jimmy Carr spoke to Catherine Ryan, and Harry Enfield spoke to Paul Whitehouse. And they were all very entertaining podcasts. The others were okay as well, but perhaps because I don't know the people in them so well or I'm not quite so interested in their styles then I wasn't quite so into those but it's great that they're all doing that free series so go and check that out if you like a bit of a laugh and things like that they're quite interesting to listen to to honour the 30th anniversary of the publication of the Good Omens book, um, David Tennant and Michael Sheen got together because they appeared in the adaptation for it for TV to do a lockdown chat, basically. So that was quite fun as well. They, the two of them interact extremely well. They've got great chemistry. So it was great to hear them back together just briefly. There have also been some more funny sports commentaries online as well with sports commentators reviewing other things as they can't do the sports they normally would. So Andrew Cotter has done another video about his dogs, which is quite funny, called The Walk of Shame. And then rugby commentator Nick Heath has been commentating on other people's lives, not just animals, but just people out and about in general. And there's lots of little short clips there, which are quite fun. And he's also doing pub quizzes on his channel as well. So it's worth a mention for that too. If you like a quiz, then there's loads of quizzes he's been doing on his channel that can test your brains. There's loads of quizzes out there at the moment. The Staying In by Dr. Amy Cavill is still going online that's now got a website of its own as well so i'll give that a link in the description too that's great if you're disabled it's become more and more accessible she's been able to get like interpreters for the deaf in there as well so yeah go and check out amy's quiz i haven't done that myself yet but at some point i will get around to doing that and then one thing i haven't had a chance to watch yet and i'm not going to watch it in full but i might flick through some of it is uh, mark watson's 24-hour marathon that he did on twitch not gaming but just broadcasting anything comedy wise basically he had lots of his comedian friends and other people involved and it has had very good reviews so yeah i'll probably have a look through that i have seen the episode of who said that that they did because that's gone on the channel for that panel show so they've copied that over which is good but the rest of it i have no idea what he did but i just thought if you like a bit of comedy you might want to check that out as well so i'll put a link to that in the description as well then there's plenty of music to mention as well and my favorite thing that i watched this week was a documentary about queen called rock the world and this was originally broadcast in 2017 to mark the 40th anniversary of the news of the world album it was also included in the box set for that album under the the title of the American Dream this documentary it's a slightly different edit but they're basically the same thing and the TV version has some Adam Lambert footage performing with Queen at the beginning and the end to bring it up to date which is quite nice actually it's quite a nice touch so it's a very interesting documentary it's very comprehensive you get to see behind the scenes of them recording the News of the World album including tracks like We Are the Champions My Melancholy Blues and Get Down Mate Love it's interesting to see them at the mixing desk and doing performances so you get to hear instrumental things that you perhaps didn't hear before very clearly when you're listening to the tracks originally and then you get to see backstage footage from their American tour as well. You get to see them having a lot of fun there, messing around. And you get to see some footage of them performing um, in Houston as well on stage. And you get to see some sound check footage and rehearsal footage too. And there's plenty of chatter with all the members of the band. You know, Freddie obviously gets a lot of screen time, quite rightly. Uh, but so does John Deacon too, you know, and he's the quietest member of the band. You don't often hear from him. So it's great that um, they got to chat to him quite a bit. So it's a very comprehensive documentary, great fun, very entertaining. So I can recommend that if you're a Queen fan. It should still be on the iPlayer, but it is also on YouTube as well. If 
you know where to look. Just search for Queen Rock the World. And also more recently, Brian May and Roger Taylor with Adam Lambert have released You Are the Champions, which, as the name suggests, is a new take on We Are the Champions for lockdown. So it's basically thanking the NHS and raising a bit of money again, as uh, many songs are doing these days, which is great. Roger Taylor's daughter, Rory, is actually in the video because she is an NHS worker. So yeah, Queen are helping me to get through lockdown, just as they've always helped me to get through life. I never get tired of their music. So it's great that they're still producing new stuff for us now. And then over on my blog, I made a post called the 30 Day Song Challenge, which is my response to the challenge posed by Victor on their website. Uh, there are various 30 Day Song Challenges out there, but I picked the one that Victor created. Basically, each day you pick a song that you like based on a certain theme. So it might be a song that makes you want to fall in love or a song that makes you feel happy or a song for the summertime or a song from your preteen years or something like that. It was quite good to be able to just think about a variety of songs. I could have picked all Queen songs probably, but I chose a variety of artists. So go and have a look at my list, see what you think and you know, see what your choices would be for each of the different days. If you like the Rolling Stones, you might want to check out their channel because they're posting the extra material from some of their concert films. So bonus tracks, things like that basically that were cut out of the main film. But I've already got the DVDs and Blu-rays, so there won't be anything there new for me. But if you haven't got their stuff, then you'll find some interesting things there that you've never seen before over the next few weeks. Last week, I mentioned that Dame Vera Lynn had recorded a new version of We'll Meet Again uh, with Stars of the Theatre. But there are many other videos on that channel on the official London Theatre channel where that was hosted. So it's well worth going to check that out for performances by various other artists from different shows or recording from their own homes. Favourites that I've particularly enjoyed include When I Grow Up from Matilda, because I loved seeing that musical, and the orchestral version they've done here is great. The stars of Six the Musical have done a performance there as well. I was going to go and see that musical this year, but sadly can't now, of course. And there's also 12 Days of Lockdown by Panto Stars, including Brian Connolly and Christopher Biggins and other people, which is really fun. And then there's also a performance of Sunny Afternoon as well, which is a very famous song by the Kinks. And this version has a guest appearance from Ray Davis himself from the Kinks, which is a lovely surprise. So yeah, there's loads of videos like that on the official London Theatre channel. Do go and check that out, because I think you'll find some nice stuff to enjoy there. Various musical stars have also got together to record a Scott Allen song called You're Not Alone to raise mental health awareness. So that's quite a nice video as well. It's got Kerry Ellis in it as well as various other big stars. So that's well worth checking out too. Slightly more random in typical YouTube fashion, but random isn't necessarily a bad thing, is the Ukulele Orchestra of Great Britain who have been recording various covers of songs from their homes, getting together online in their groups. And yeah, they've been recording songs like Thank You For The Music and Crazy and The Model. So they're all very recognisable when you hear them, but they just sound very different in their style. And it's just good fun. It's something a bit different. A group called Camden Voices have recorded a cover of George Harrison's classic hit Here Comes The Sun, which is lovely as well. So that's well worth a watch. That's really nice. And yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that mishmash of things. And there were things in there that you enjoyed or are interested in checking out yourself. And yeah there's nothing else i can think of mentioning at the moment so please stay safe and well don't forget to like comment and subscribe as per usual and i will see you for another video very soon bye